Okay, welcome to this video where I'm going to present this truck. It's a Scania R-Series 4x2 Highline and it's a scale model in a scale 1 to 25 and in this video I'm going to go through the details of this truck, the mechanics of it, as well as um, what you should bear in mind if you're trying to build one of your own because I've made building instructions for this and for trailers and cargo for these trailers as well so that you can build your own if you want to. So, first, this truck, just like many others on my website, which is going to be a link to below in the description, is remote controlled, so you can turn it on and the light goes on and if you have a remote control like this, just a standard Lego remote control, you can go back and forth and turn the steering wheel left and right. And this truck is running out of juice. But this is a good thing because that means you can see how easy or relatively easy it is to change batteries. So, in the back of the truck, there's the battery box and you have to take Sides off like this, it makes it easy to disconnect the battery box, disconnect the cables. So here it goes. And let's see if this one has more power. Where did the port go? Ah, there it is. Okay, so setting it in like this and turning it on to see if there's any power on it. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so put it in, in again and I'm making this more close up. So you can see I'm missing the sides, which I'm just sticking in like this, pressing down on the bottom, pressing up in the top. The same with the other side. Taking this panel, putting it on the side, pressing in at the bottom, in at the top, and there you go. The truck has been refueled. Now, I have made this nice piece of paper with a lot of keywords on what I should remember to talk about because I'm trying to make this video short so that you can um, get to build your own truck as fast as possible, right? Okay, so as I said, it goes back and forth really fast and it steers right in there. So, it's fun to just drive around with the truck like this, but you might want to up it a bit and build a trailer like this. It's a small container trailer and let's not cheat too much. If you have your truck, your trailer, and if you also have a container like this, fits right onto it, then you can take your truck and just drive it into the trailer and hope that you have better aim than me, but I don't. But if you go into the trailer and drive forward again, the legs go up and everything is connected. You can just drive around, which is which is fun because it's a small truck. Okay, so it's cool and all you can attach the trailer and the legs go up but how about detaching it again then you need the legs to go down but if you're building this trailer the legs can either be up or down let's see like this but while they go up automatically when the truck comes in they can't go down automatically so i made this trailer which is just like the yellow one, except that the legs go up and down depending on uh, how the wheels are turning. So if you go forward, the legs go up, like this, really slowly, but I should change the gearing. And if you reverse, the legs go down. So let's see if this actually works in action. So you have a truck. And the trailer, you're already connected. You can see if the trailer goes in, it connects to the truck, but it can't just jump off. 
Let's see. And we are going forward. Da, 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 da. And reversing. And the legs go down. Okay. You might also have noticed that the truck has these strange red pins on the back. They are actually indicators for the state of the decouple mechanism I put into it. And I sure hope it works because so else there won't be much point in making this video. But okay, I'll show you the next one first. So yeah, it's this trailer here, which is coupled onto the truck, you might even have a container onto it. Like this, you're reversing, backing up, putting it into space, and if you're good at aiming, then well, which I'm not. Oh, it works. Yes. Then you can just drive straight off. When these are pointing nearly forward, which is pretty neat, because then you can just back up again, like this, and. Connect with the trainer again, and eventually the legs will begin to lift. So that's when it starts to become fun. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the mechanics of this truck as well as um, the design, what you should bear in mind if you want to build your own using my instructions, and perhaps you want to make it in a different color and stuff, but I'll get to that. So first, the mechanics of it. It's a 4x2, so it only uh, drives using the wheels back and forth. And it has a uh, differential, as you can see here, which makes it uh, better at turning corners. Now, I have made a small mug, mug up so that you can see here. This is what it looks like underneath. That's a nice differential. Connected directly to the shaft, which goes directly to the big XL motor. So it has a lot of torque and it's a fairly simple and stable design. Now you can also see this red elastic band. It's connected to this split, which is the one that makes the trailer lock onto the truck if you just reverse into it. Let's take a trailer. Oops. So the trailer comes in and says Dook. click onto it and it can just get loose again. Now in order for it to decouple I have this other input shaft which turns the back part of the design around and as soon as it turns this way you can see it takes the split down, which makes the truck decouple the trailer. And it does that while reversing, because when it goes forward, you can see nothing happens. Which means that you can go forward indefinitely and your trailer won't come loose unless someone kicks it or something. But reversing and making the red pins point correctly makes you decouple the trailer, which is but it's pretty neat, right? Or at least I hope so. So, remember there's two input shafts. There's the one for uh, driving the rear wheels and the one for the mechanism. The one for the rear wheel is um, connected directly to the XL motor, while the other one has been geared down 1 to 9. I've done it that using some basic gearing. There's the motor here. Then this shaft here with the red pin is the one that goes to um, the differential. And down here you can see there's a 8 tooth gear going up to a 24 tooth gear. So it's a reduction of 1 to 3 and again 8 to 24. Which is again 1 to 3 reduction. So you have a 1 to 9 reduction on the gearing when the big Gear turns down here, which is directly connected to that second input shaft. Oops. So that's how the main mechanism of this truck works. So up front we have a. Let's see, I have a mug up for that as well, but you can see here. Uh, I can't see it very well, but yeah. This is the steering mechanism <coughs> using the remote control. You can see how. It turns 
and it actually has Ackermann steering geometry, which means that when you're turning in a circle, the inner wheel turns more than the outer one, which makes uh, it follow the, the circle that it's driving along better because the inner wheel will drive along a smaller circle, the one with a smaller diameter than the outer one. And the same when you turn it to the other side, like this. And it's extremely simple. It's just, see here, this is my markup of it. When you turn it to one side, you can see you're turning uh, this way now. This wheel here is turning much more than that one over here because of, let's take this one off. Okay, that was a bit too much off. <laughs> one second. This you can see it turns while well, using ah oh, this is a tough mechanism. You can see this is the point where the steering is turning around, but this down here is the connection point to the steering pin. And since it's not here, but here you make the difference that makes this inner wheel turn more than the outer one. I'll make a link for the Wikipedia article or something like that so you can get more details of it. But that is the gist of it. Now, you can see that I have used some pretty basic boring rear wheels for this truck. Usually I use Two wheels like this, which look more realistic, but these old model team tires don't have much scrap. Oh, let's see, I have this one before. So, thank you, steering mechanism. I'm going to take your wheels. Back in 1986, someplace 1990, Lego started with model team wheels like this. They didn't have much scrap at all. Then when uh, we came to like the 2000s and some model team sets were re-released, the Blue Fury was, then the rubber they used had more grip. So in a direct comparison, this one sticks much better than the old one. But it's still nothing compared to the grip of these white rubber tires. So those are the ones I'm using for this truck because it has a really big bias of weight distributed to the front. So if you're trying to build some of my older models, you'll find that they pretty much couldn't drive at all because all the weight was in the front and the rear end didn't have any grip at all. So this works much better. I know it doesn't look as nice as if you're using these wheels for the rear, but Functionality beats aesthetics in this case. Now, the second huge improvement upon the old models was that if I tried to do this with the old one, it would just die, it would break down. The reason is that I have made a complete Technic frame which extends into the cabin of this truck making it much more durable than a standard model team truck that I made in the old days. Which means that you can lift this from the center, you can lift it from the top, you can lift it from the doors, you can, and you can move it around. It's fairly rugged, which is great. And the same with the trailers. It's, if it breaks, you can just rebuild it. Well, it's Lego, right? So that's cool, meaning that if you have children playing with this truck, it won't just break down. So I'm saying that if you're going to build this truck, and as I mentioned before, I had made building instructions for it. There's going to be a link in the, the video description for the building instructions, but there's also a couple of things that you should bear in mind if you're trying to build this truck. So 
It contains a lot of parts, more than 900. And if you're going to build your own, it will it might become quite costly to just get all the parts in all the right colors. I have actually made the building instructions red instead of orange because it's easier to get the red parts than orange. And you can build it in any color you want, of course, and which is a cool thing about building custom models. But you should bear in mind that I have cheated a bit. You can see here in the top these nice rounded parts here and again down here don't actually exist yet. They are one by two curves but the only parts on the market right now are one by four curves. The one by two will first come out in fall 2013 so in like a couple of months from here. Some sets have already come out but this is a part you can get in the stores. It's a 1x4 curve but you can cut it in the middle like I have done and then you have two 1x2 curves which are the ones that you need to build this truck. Now the part just came off and just going to put it back on. There are still some parts which you should not use to lift this truck. Specifically the the staircases on the side. Now, I'm using it up here and up here on the other side as well. You can see if I take it off, it's 1x2 curve. So you have to take 1x4 and cut it in the middle. And in order to build this model in orange, I have also done the same with the orange parts here. This, oh, let's see if we can do it closer. This was also a 1x4 curve, I cut it in the middle and now it's two 1x2s. As I said, they will come out later this year, but not in many colors initially, so you might want to end up cutting your own parts, which is sacrilege, but it's necessary once in a while. Now, the doors open. The reason why they do that is so that you can get to the interior, which consists of a couple of seats, a steering wheel, and uh, it looks pretty... It's pretty basic, but it looks good. I mean, it's, you can't see much through the windows anyway, but what you want to see in the interior, of course. So, this is the gist of it. You can see that the windscreen in front, on real scanners, it's actually pretty vertical. But if you're using a a windscreen and just putting it on like a normal person would, it would be standing like like this with a rather large slope backward. What I have done with this model is to move the top half a stud to the front so that it has a lesser slope. Of course, you can move it a whole stud forward so that it doesn't have any slope at all, but that wouldn't be like the real models either. So it stands like this, which means that the construction is a bit iffy, but it is stable. It's, it actually works. And that is pretty much it. Just going to go through my list. Yep, yeah, talking about everything. Good. And time is up. So, you can build this model using my instructions. It's, uh, it's going to take a while because it's a large model. But it's definitely worth it because it actually works. You can actually drive around with this model and don't risk that it breaks down like my old model did if you try to make those. Yep, that's it. Thank you for watching and I might make videos like this in the future as well, if, if people think that they are actually useful. That's it.